in your years to set in type one month matters podcast M M P one matters podcast have you done that? Then subscribe, subscribe. It was actually approved by the Bureau of Investigation. They actually watched it and they saw that the things that they do there is very important for the city. So you see some of us are not wearing their t-shirts and stuff. It's not just for nothing. And today they're coming to sponsor this whole program. So we also have to do them move by subscribing to a YouTube channel. Let's do it. I mean, the money matters podcast in your YouTube experience. Innovation is an inexhaustible engine for economic development. Mr. Chairman, panel of judges, co-debaters, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol of death. One with innovation would know that my colleagues and I would argue for the motion that Ghana should pull out of climate change agreement and pursue active industrialization. Mr. Chairman, for the purpose of this debate, I would like to define industrialization. Industrialization is defined as the process of transformational change of human society, socially and economically, from an agrarian society to an industrialized one. Mr. Chairman, I presume my fellow debaters might argue that industrialization is one of the major causes of climate change, and that it has led to the following. One, significant loss from the Greenland. Two, increase of blood, drugs, and bushfires. Three, increase of death and illness. Four, extension of some species. Five, significant de decline in global food production. Hence, we should pull out of industrialization and pursue climate change. But we say otherwise because of the following reasons. To start with, climate change adaptation and then regenerative nature of the environment. Mr. Chairman, we all know that climate um, industrialization is not the only cause of climate change. So by pulling out of industrialization, we are not guaranteed the fact that we would be able to achieve the climate change mitigation we want. So instead of halting industrialization, we should rather focus on adapting to climate change. This coupled with 
the regenerative nature of the environment would help Ghana to skew towards the environmental balance we are looking for and reduce the effect of climate change to the very minimum. Donald Trump said, climate change is mythical and non-existent. It stands to reason with the fact that the, a highly industrialized country like Kuwait is being affected by climate change in a minimal sense. So the effect of climate change on a highly industrialized country like Kuwait is very minimal. Also, the introduction, the introduction of laws and policies to regulate the activities of the industry. Instead of putting a stop to industrialization, I believe the government should rather introduce regulatory laws to promote and enhance the sustainability of the environment that pursue green industrialization. Also, and, and the Andrews said, and I quote and unquote, when confronted with the challenge, the committed heart was set for a, a solution, but the undecided heart was set for an escape. So instead of moving out of industrialization or running away from industrialization to pursue climate change, we should rather change our lifestyles and behavior. I believe you all know that change starts from the internal before it gets to the external. So instead of fighting industrialization, I believe we should change our unpolitical, unpatriotic, and selfish lifestyle as Ghanaians just, just to ensure climate change mitigation. Furthermore, industrialization also plays a positive role in climate change mitigation. And in reducing climate change, as I said, joint engineering, electrification, energy efficiency, and conservation, which are all activities in mitigating climate change, are being realized as a result of industrialization. So by pulling out of industrialization, it means we are pulling out of climate change mitigating activities, and then we are supporting climate change, and then we are suffering and not getting the benefits as we are supposed to get from industrialization. So, both, as other sides, we are losing at both sides. One, we are losing at the climate change, and then we are losing at the, the, the industrialization. Last but not the least, in a publication in Nature, a British interdisciplinary scientific journal indicates that the world developed and highly industrialized country, country who introduced climate change arguments, that the Paris Agreement has been put out of industrialization. And I rather expecting us, we the Ghanaians, who really need industrialization to pull out? If you want to show somebody the way, you take the step for us to follow. They know the importance of industrialization. That is why even after introducing the Paris Agreement, they have been pulled out here. And then they expect us to be Ghanaians to pull out. And it's like they are subjecting us to the change of colonialism as a result of pulling out of industrialization. So I believe we should forgo the climate change agreement and pursue industrialization. Mr. Chairman, to conclude, humanity has come far in terms of industrialization just to give up. Let us remember that halting industrialization does not guarantee the fact that we will be able to change climate change or we will be able to mitigate climate change. Mr. Chairman, halting industrialization means halting some of the significant climate change mitigation activities on the last scale. To buttress whatever I said, I would like to re-highlight the points I stated. One, climate, climate change adaptation and then the regenerative nature of the environment. Two, laws and policies to regulate the activities of the industry. Three, we should rather change our lifestyle and behavior rather than focusing on harsh industrialization. Four, industrialization plays a role in climate change mitigation. Five, the people who introduced the climate change agreement are not participate. So why do they expect us as Ghanaians to participate? It is like they putting us in the shackles of colonialism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with some rebuttals from the Prime Minister. He stated that developed countries like US are highly industrialized and that they are not even part of climate change agreement and yet so they are not being affected. That was what he said. He said US is a developed country. Um, in, he said climate, pulling out of climate change, inv investing more of industrialization is not guaranteed to affect the economy. 
Industrialization is not guaranteed to affect the economy, according to what he said. And he used U.S. as a case study. I like to pull it or notify to the House that U.S. is a developed country and they are highly industrialized. Comparing a developing country to a developed country is such against the odds because as a developed country, they are able to stand on their own, to survive on their own, be or without other international relations bodies. And number two, they also made us understand or understood that forcing industrialization doesn't guarantee that we'll be able to combat climate change. Why? Because industrialization actually mitigates climate change. All that you stated actually were points that come from or stems from a developed country, a country where they'll be able to produce all of those um, materials you propose to us. But let me help you understand this. Ghana is a third world country, okay? And we are, we the opposing country are not saying we are pulling out of industrialization. What we are making you understand is this. Focusing or actively participating in climate change is actually going to affect us or boost our economy. That is politically, socially, economic, financially, all right, even as a developing country, as compared to focusing on active industrialization. Let me give you a case study. In China, what happened, what brought about the um, great famine? This is called the leap forward policy. In China, it forced a great people, it, try, it forced the agrarian Chinese people to be industrialized. What happened? Millions of people died, all because of this industrialization. They were so focused on the fact that they have to um, participate in active industrialization that they forgot to concentrate on the most important part, which is the agri sector, and as such, they couldn't meet their bargains. And what does climate change do to agri? Agri actually depends solely on climate change, and that is the case study here in Ghana. African countries are the most people or the most countries that are being affected most with climate change. As such, pulling out, that is my first point, pulling out of climate change is going to affect we the developing countries. That is the African countries, number one, Ghana. Why? Because we depend solely on climate or the weather. So therefore, pulling out of this, not focusing on our climate action, is going to affect our agri-production and others. Thank you. So, panel, what am I here to do today? What am I here to do today? I'm going to give us a little education on climate change agreements and also talk about what the climate change agreement talk about the effect on the economy and the political perspective of climate change as a whole. Now, climate change, um, the climate change agreement, okay, countries came together to fight this climate change effect and it became a policy for them. The climate change effect, such as the global warming, rise of sea level, etc., it became a policy for them to achieve by the end of 2030, just, as, just like the UN SDG goals. Now, what are we saying? What we are saying is this. We as the opposition stand that we shouldn't pull out of climate change in as much as we also focus on ag active industrialization. Why how does this affect us? The economy, the entire budget of Ghana, we are using Ghana as our central city. The entire budget of Ghana is as a result of international relations. That we need to control to these international relations. International relations such as UN, EU, AU, and all of these people. If we try to stay or stay out of these people, it means that we are going to have an um, enormous effect financially on ourselves and also economically and socially. Because most of our budget and profit comes from all of these people, okay? So when we stay out or pull out of climate change, we tend to actually be um, opposed to the Chinese people, we tend to be opposed to the uh, Russia and other countries, which is what we do not want to stand up against. Now, let's talk about private investments. Ghana has its biggest investors, such as China, who buy into climate change. Falling out means breaking contact with these people. And as I made you understand from the start, that Ghana is a developing country, even though it is a country which has its sovereignty, it's a sovereignty state, okay, but then it cannot function on its own, it cannot stand on its own. That is why we need all of these people on board. If not, there wouldn't have been any need for Abu Fado to fly all the way to um, other countries to go and sign contracts for us to flourish as a country. That is why we need these private investors on board. And all of these private, private investors, we're able to convince them and be with them because we all have the same vision, we have the same coordinates, we work together and agree together, and that is the most important thing. How do you expect Iran to sign a contract with Israel or Iran to sign a contract with Pakistan? They can't do that, why? Because they have the 
disagreement issue. And this is what we are trying to avoid as a nation. Now, climate change is an extremely issue for the success of every country. It is due to allies, okay? And we gain our allies from international relations. And that is when our economy or private investment also comes in. My first and second point. And as an ally, there is no country which is an island. As such, we all depend on each other due to mutual understanding and cooperation and association. Therefore, if you believe in political perspective, if you believe in peace and sovereignty, if you believe that every country's obligation is to make sure that if citizens are okay, protected and all, then it means that we all have to ensure that there is peace and stability with our allies. You certainly cannot go against United States of America when they rise up a war against you. You can't fight a battle with Russia alone when they come up against you. Why? Because you don't, you, you don't have those means. No military set, your military stance is not strong and all of that. As such, you need all of these allies on board. We are also talking about globalization here. No country is an island, as I said. A developing country can speak from globalization if we are at the forefront of all global issues. All global issues, which includes climate change. And climate change is very essential because when, when we talk about globalization, okay, it is due to globalization that we, that we have Wi-Fi, left phones, and all of these people around. It is due to globalization that we are able to have a very good relationship with other countries. So, when we say globalization is an important thing, what we are meaning is that if Ghana sends us to be the forefront of climate change action, then it means that other countries will see how serious this country as a nation is, and how, how great our perspective of the vision of protecting the rights of our citizens, and also ensuring peace and stability around and inside our country is. So when you talk about active international Attacking. We expect that you forward the economy and not to make it so dependent. See, Ghanaian economy is overly dependent on agriculture. That is why we are where we are now. Watch China, watch America, watch UK. They are dependent on service and industry. That is what you want. That is what you ascribe to be. So if the president tells you, the citizens, not spectators, you have to demand your money. You have to give him a condition. You push him to the wall. Where is going to use your money to actually forward the economy? And that is something more important. It's but then the biggest burden or the biggest question is when we pull out the climate change agreement, will climate change be stopped? The question is a big no. Why? Because there is no scientifically proven evidence that climate change actually began after industrialization. Issues about climate change are going to be in the is whether or not Ghana should pull out from climate change for the or continue with active industrialization. Now, I'll come by saying that industrialization is the process by which an economy is transformed from primarily agricultural to one based on the manufacturing of goods. Individual manual labor is often replaced by mechanized mass production. Now, here is the case that Ghana is mainly on mainly based on agriculture. Our 60% of our GDP is based on agriculture. So how can you tell me that if we continue with active industrialization, our problems will be solved when we are eliminating agriculture in the system? Now, he also talked about, my opponent talked about the extinction of some species. When you talked about the climate change leading to the extinction of some species, what then shows that if not checked, this climate change will lead to the extinction of the human race? The human race will be affected. The, the active industrialization we are saying here is that these countries are like, we are saying Ghana is an ally to other countries. In the sense that Ghana takes money from other countries to build this country. And therefore, when Ghana pulls out of this climate change policy, it would affect our economy like largely because the, the climate change policy is an the climate change policy is a policy that was signed in 2016 by all UN countries in the sense that if Ghana alone tried to pull out from this climate change policy, it would affect us economically. We are also saying that there, is, there should be globalization, where it's a series of industrialization but actively participation in climate change. We are not saying that no, we should eliminate industrialization at all. We are saying that yes, we shouldn't pull out of climate change policy. Here is the case that developing countries, particularly those in Africa, are generally poor and marginalized. Would this, would this like climate change affect us most? 
even though the largest share historically is produced by the developed countries, the emission of greenhouse gases originated in developed countries we do but this is a problem that the climate change policy like the climate change is affecting the, the whole the globally like something that affects us globally and not locally so we should rather fight we should rather add to the fight of climate change we are also saying that several areas of ghana have been indicated for pot potential impact of the direct manifestation of climate change this includes increased temperature rainfall variability including unpredictable and extreme events sea levels rise, among others. We are saying that Ghana is located at Ghana is located at a, Ghana is located where this country is affected heavily by tropical storms and the influence of Atlantic Ocean and the Sahel. So if Ghana pulls out of this climate change policy, it will affect us more. Don't forget the issue of microclimate change. When we are actively industrializing, we are reducing agriculture. We are rather like doing the material things we have and therefore this will affect our agriculture. We are also saying that there will, there, will be, there will be no peace and economic stability. Why are we saying this? The UN will protect like, the countries that are involved in, in it. And in the case where there is a problem in Ghana, there are countries. If we are pulling out of the policies that the UN are creating, how can we get like, soldiers to come and help us or policemen to come and help us when there is conflict in Ghana? We are saying that no, Ghana shouldn't pull out of the climate change policy, but shouldn't also go on to pursue active industrialization. The active here means that it is energetic. Yes, we should industrialize, but we shouldn't do it actively, in the sense that when we actively, industri when we actively industrialize, it will affect our country. We are also breaching contracts. Yes, it's a contract that has been made, that by 2030, by 2030, we are fighting climate change. So if we pull out of climate change, we are breaching that, the contract. And this contract set to help Ghanaians because we are saying that Ghana is a sovereign state. Oblig it is the obligation of this country like, to fight for its people. And if we are pulling out of climate change, how can other countries fight for us? Look at, take Ghana map, like, take Ghana map, that small place. If we are pulling out of, actually, in the, uh, if we are pulling out of climate change, how can other countries, like larger countries, help us fight our, our, like, our conflict and all other things? We are saying that. We are saying that the national climate change policy is, is that that seeks to help agriculture and food security. If we are actively industrializing, meaning that we have to import our food, we have to import other necessary things that we need, because now agriculture is producing all, and now we want to actively industrialize. Our natural resource management, will it be safe that we actively industrialize, we use our resources like foolishly, at the end of the day, we will suffer. Equitable, this is the case that we are saying that yes, we should not pull out of climate change policy and pursue active industrialization. Thank you. Before I start with my submission, okay. I'd like to rebut certain uh, statements without uh, basis for which uh, the, the speaker that just left me. Uh, he said that it will. Uh, Drawing out of climate change mitigation will mean a breach of contract. But we must all know that U.S., that is a highly industrialized country, having known the importance of industrialization, went drew themselves out of it, even after the agreement, the Paris Agreement, with the other countries. So getting out of industrialization will not mean a breach of contract in any way, but it will mean that we know our left from right, in as much as the development of our economy is concerned. Another thing uh, my, uh, the speaker that just left indicated is that 60% of our economy is agrarian. And that is to say that if 60% is agra agrarian, then it means that we really need industrialization in order to grow. So I also like to say that as he stated, that industrialization, um, succumbing, not succumbing to the agreement under industrialization will mean um, a disadvantage to us in as much as trade liberalization is concerned. What I would like to say is that it wouldn't mean so because people, other countries do not have the opportunities as we have in terms of natural resources. So they would always be dependent on us in as much as our, our natural resources are concerned. Now making my statement, Benjamin Franklin said 
Those who offer freedom for security will never have it, nor do they deserve either one. When we say that our economy needs support from other countries simply because um, we do not have the economic robust nature in order to withstand pressure, it means that we will always be dependent on these people. So what I'm saying is that these countries under the Paris Agreement have not actually made an effort to fight against climate change mitigation. So what I'm saying is that these people, they are actually um, uh, give, telling us that we need a rock when they do, they, they do not want to take a stone. They are saying we need a cup of wine when they wouldn't take a sip. They are saying that we need to mitigate, uh, to, to contribute to climate change when they wouldn't put their hands on deck to come against, uh, what is it, climate change. So what I'm saying is that all of us have to come to the agreement that it is not only climate change mitigation through uh, uh, putting a stop to industrialization that will help our economy to grow. But it has to do with a whole lot of factors which my uh, first and second speakers have indicated. Thank you very much. industrialization because of the climate change agreement is a big move. Now, we are not only emphasizing on agri, but mind you me that Ghana, we are close to the ocean and then effects of climate change lead to storm effects and other stuff. So, in, in an attempt of pulling out of the climate change agreement, how are we going to combat this issue? Use USA as your case study. Now, let me prove to you that US as a country on their own, have ways and means they can find, they can fight this climate change. With Ghana, we cannot. And two, U.S. is combating the climate change. U.S. is combating the climate change with China on their own. With Ghana, we are not doing so. So you cannot use U.S. to compare Ghana when we are talking of climate change. Now, the panel, I like to highlight the points that have been stated by my main speaker and then the second speaker. We are saying that there is no need to pull out of industrialization, but make sure that as you industrialize, you take care of the climate as well. Because if you take China, for example, as said by my list, my, my list speaker, they, they were more interested in industrializing. But what was the result? People had to die because they were not meeting the demands of the average. Are we ready to do that as a country? Which I don't believe. And I would like to ask, are you ready to die for someone to survive and enjoy what you feel for? No, I don't believe you are ready to do that. Now, we are saying that pulling out of the climate change will affect us, will affect the peace and stability that is allies with other countries. As you and we, we, we are, we have one aim, we have one goal, and then we move according to that thing. So since we brought out this policy, if Ghana alone should pull out, are you sure we are going to enjoy those benefits, those things that we have, or those things that we gain as a country from those countries, which I don't believe. Now, Ghana, our economy is largely dependent on those countries. If you look at the planting for food and jobs, most of the funds came from Canada and other countries. If Ghana should pull out of this climate change agreement, what do you think will be the result? We are also saying that globalization is also a reason why we don't need to pull out of this thing. Ghana, we are not a country on our own. And Ghana, we cannot depend on our own because we are so developing. So you cannot take the case study of USA and com compare it to Ghana as a country. We are still enjoying some benefits from this country that surrounds us. So if you talk of pulling out of climate change entirely and focusing of, on active industrialization, then what as a country are we going to use to fight this climate change? Have you asked yourself that question? We are not against to industrialize, but we are saying that in a way of industrializing, make sure you also protect the climate because it shouldn't be at the expense of the lives of the people in the country. Who are you industrializing for when the people are dying? The third house, I like to say that. The third house, I like to say that. We are not entirely against industrialization, but what we are just saying is that as we industrialize, we protect the climate in an attempt to protect the life of the people in the country, so that these same people you are fighting for may be able to enjoy the benefits of what you are doing. Thank you. Thank you. One, based on the kind of ideas of points you are given, and I would 
as the first thing. Then two, engagement in this name. The reason why our term of engagement is not a project, first of all. The reason why engagement is very important is because in the debate we are not too far off people talking about two things. Separately, we are having a particular point where we can know this is right or wrong. What we say engagement is not just about you saying they are wrong. You have to show us why what they said is wrong. And what makes you better than this by like giving examples and most of the time we call it analysis. That's what engagement is very important. So for the first debate, you could realize to an extent we then get the gender that was right, but the debate was quite asymmetric. There was not much of engagement. Everybody was trying to like true, this is not true, and then this was the other person was saying that. We have to follow who best answered the question with the answer they gave. They don't give us our judgment on the best one. Actually, the best debate was the two one incident. When they are on the rankings, you see how the rankings came. And the second debate, it was an anonymous debate, meaning like unanimous story, meaning all the pages came on a consensus as to who won. Because I think that debate was quite like. A very good one to an extent, but the match was quite wide. So, as the best criteria, I'm just going to give you the answer. Alright, thank you. Um, on the ideas that engage the debate, everybody seeks to answer a question or realize that all the debates we are talking about seeks to address a particular issue. So, for the first debate, if I'm right, was as to whether we should conserve our resources or we should actively utilize them. The question that we have been answered in the debate was to whether utilization brings about the results that we expect from those utilizations. So when we utilize the resources, does it trickle down to practically affect the lives of people or is it just ends up in the pockets of a few elite politicians that are the top. Or the second thing was whether the conservation is a solution to that problem, which I also find it a bit difficult to see that the opposition address because what they kept on showing was to see what government was trying to see is not going to happen. The idea that when you utilize the resources, it's not going to trickle down to the lives of the people. But what we also feel to need from them is whether conservation is what is going to solve that problem. And so we should be able to look at going into the final round. That you don't just rebut some of these points, show us how your side solves the problem. And so it's not about the number of ideas, it's about how relevant that idea is and how it helps to answer the question. The debate was generally good, but then there is uh, something I like to say to and the points that came up were very interesting. So we think that the problems they are identifying are mostly technicalities with like professional space. So we can't really hold you guys that kind of thing. You are not really into the data of the Thank you. Thank you.